Hi, I'm Marcia Mason. I'm an artist with Rancho Cordova Arts. We're bringing you fun instructional videos every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific Time. Today we'll be exploring what we can learn from mixing pairs of watercolor paints using a split primary palette. And we're going to be making our own color wheel as a reference. Palettes and color wheels are all different. There are a couple because some are based on theories and traditions from past centuries or how we name only some colors in our language or, oh, for instance, see how red is across from green on this one and red is across from aqua on this one. Aha! Now, what I like to refer to is science. Uh, this is where different paints fall on a spectrum of visible light, 360 degrees. This shows the colors, the hues, and the saturation of, of different paints is shown. The brighter ones are here and the duller, duller, duller ones get down here until we're getting into black and white. Now, this came from handprint.com. It's my go-to website for technical information and inspiration. Handprint.com, and that's where this artist wheel came from. Very great website. Thank you, Bruce McAvoy. Our split primary palette is going to help us mix pairs of paint so we can tr control not only that hue, the color, but also it shows it shows us how we can control the saturation. That's the clear colors out here and then the grayed out colors. Now, what defines a primary color? Have you been told that it's because you can't put other colors together to get it? Well, guess what? We put two colors together to get each of these primary colors. I used a cool and a warm red, the quinacridone rose, and a cadmium red to get that red. It looks like a primary red. This looks like a primary blue. I got that from a, a French ultramarine and a thalo blue here, primary, and here too, yellow, an isoindolinone yellow, and a lemon yellow to get our primary yellow. Now these are the paints I'm using. I've got Windsor Newton Cad Red, a Daniel Smith Permanent Yellow Deep for our warm yellow, French Ultramarine for our warm blue, and I, I put them on my palette for all the warm colors up here. And then the cool colors, I've got my Quinacridone Rose, that's Daniel Smith, I've got a Windsor Newton uh, yet Lemon Yellow, and also Windsor Newton uh, Windsor Blue, they call it. It's a thalo blue. So that's what we're using, just six paints today. Get those out of the way. Because we want a clean palette to do this. Now, I already told you that I mixed these six colors to get our, our primaries right here. Now we're also going to make secondaries, and I've already done the orange. A warm red and a warm yellow make the brightest orange. If I start moving away, this one here is still the warm red, but here I'm moving not from here, but over to here to the cool yellow, I get a, dull, a slightly duller orange. On the other hand, if I stick with this warm yellow, don't go here, go to the cool red right here. I also get a duller orange. Now, the least saturated, so we're, we're losing saturation as we go. I'm gonna go out here to the cool yellow, the cool red, and I get the most grayed orange. It's subtle, but it really is quite different as you go here. Now we're going to do that for the violets, the purples. So I made these little arrows so I could keep track of it myself. I'm going to put the, let's see, I'm going to, let's start here with the blue. I'm going to 
put my warm blue, which is the French ultramarine. And don't worry too much about all this terminology about warm and cool. It can be a little confusing. And instead of this cool red that made this bright purple, I'm going to go over to my CAD red. And cadmium, so mix that up. Cadmium is one of those colors that when you paint it on, you really should just do it in one fell swoop. You shouldn't go back and work it or it tends to become kind of dull. Now my purple, I'm going to try and get this to be about the same kind of purple as the other one. That's pretty close. Wow, you're gonna really going to notice the difference here. Okay, here, yes, just mixed a little bit because after I finish one little cube here, I'm, I'm going to wipe that palette clean for the next, the next mixture. Okay, that is a lot darker than that first one, so I actually may go, go back and make that darker later, but not important right now. This one, I'm going to take my cool red, I'll start right there, and I'm going to mix it with the phthalo, which is a very strong mixing color, so I'm just going to use a little dab out here, and Okay, that's a little on the blue side, so we'll get a little more of that. And that's pretty close. Just going to give it a little bit more. There we go. All right. Mm. Okay, that's a little too light, but I'll just, just make sure I've got the right stuff here. Phthalo, and my rose, okay, come back here, rose, there we go, this one doesn't care if you work over it, so, there we go, righty, these all dry a little duller, Depending on the pigments, some pigments dry a lot, dull, a lot duller um, and lighter. Okay, now we're going to go with our ones farthest away. We're going to go with the Cad Red and the Thalo Blue. This is an interesting combination, and I have seen it on some, some old masters watercolors. It's... Uh, they're both, they're both old, old uh, pigments, but they, uh, they separate out. I may leave it on my palette so you can watch the colors separate. Let's see, we want the phthalo blue. I believe that's what this is. We'll get our purple. This is pretty dramatic. See how very much grayer that is than the other. Actually, it's almost a black. Maybe we'll use a little bit of red on that. More cat to warm it up. There we go. Wow. Well, I can see that my secondary there will need another coat. So I'm going to go with these two closest colors, the ultramarine and the, there we go, okay, now that these, these are, there, that's a little better, okay, and now we will do our greens. Now, greens in nature tend to be a bit muted, so we'll see how this comes out. We may find something useful here. 
So we're going to start with our phthalo and our lemon yellow. And we should get the brightest. Bright, bright, bright. Okay. It almost looks like a, reminds me of the colors of the Caribbean here. Okay, we may need to go over that to make it a little darker later, but we're just going to get this down. There's a pretty bright green. Now we're going to, on this next one, we're going to use our yellow. Come on, yellow. Okay, with the ultramarine. See what we get here. Okay. A bunch more yellow. Okay. Oh, I could use a little oops, wrong one. That's why it's good to wipe these off each time. So Things don't get confused. Okay, here we go. Here is our first desaturation. On our second one, we're going to use the warm yellow. which is the phthalo. Okay, that's really strong, so... Oh boy. Pretty. Okay, that's kind of an emerald. Well, let's put a little more yellow in there. Yeah, ooh, nice. Okay. Maybe a little too yellow. Okay. You can see when I put more paint, then I get a little deeper. Oh boy, that's pretty. Oh boy. Love how the pigment falls into the valleys in the paper. Okay. Now, we're going to go farthest out on this green to our warm yellow. I am going to... Clean that off. There we go. Okay. We're going to go with our warm yellow and our warm blue. Right here. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, this is really awesome. Okay, this is our most desaturated color. You can see it is grayer than the others. I'm going to go back and put a little more paint on this one. Right there. That and this. Okay. Wow, that's a pretty turquoise. Let's get... Something that's more green. Mmm, yummy. Okay. Alrighty. So, I will touch some of that up later for myself, but you can see we have uh, all of our uh, primaries that were mixed, all of our secondaries that were mixed, and then, and we use this first square that we use, we use the closest ones. So as you desaturate, here's the main point of all this. The closer two colors are to the paint you want to mix, the brighter they will be. As you move out, as you move out here, you get a less saturated color. 
Same here, a less saturated color. And if you go the farthest away on the color wheel of your yellow and blue, you will get a quite a grayed out green. Same for all these other uh, uh, secondaries that we have desaturated. So that's, that's the big point of the split primary system, for me anyway, is if you want a color to be bright, pick colors that are close to it on the color wheel to get it. If you want a color not to be bright, pick them farther away, depending on how grayed out you want them to be. So here it is. The closer the paint's on the wheel, the brighter the mix. Uh, if we continued to get far away on the wheel, we'd get some beautiful grays. Um, and, and I do. Now, uh, if you want even more information based on mixing pairs of paint, you can also do charts. And I love these. They take about 45 minutes each to do. Uh, and it doesn't matter how many of these times you add water to your paint. But this is the pure ISO indolinone yellow, the permanent yellow deep. This is full strength, mass tone it's called, right out of the tube. This is phthalo blue all the way down, just added water. And then as you mix them across, you can see the range of greens that you will get. And let's see, we used cool on this side. And so um, this one right here would fall into our chart right here. Now, here's a a couple of greens that uh, you can make with the French ultramarine blue. So these are going to be grayed down because they're farther away from where we're getting just just because one of the paints is far away. Now if you pick this this one right here which would be here that should fall on our chart and I'd say it does right here. I'll go over that so it's a little darker and goes with the rest that way but you can see it's pretty gray and then, if you really want to get gray, our farthest yellow with the farthest blue, and you just barely get to green. It's quite gray in here. But if you have a chart like this and you want to see what you can get, you can just go to your chart. You don't have to guess about your pigments. I, I really like that. I encourage you to make reference charts in any way that you want to. This is the way that works for me. Now, we encourage you to post a photo of any paintings you make on our Rancho Cordova Arts Facebook page and check out our instructional videos each weekday at 4 p.m. Rancho Cordova Arts and I thank you for watching. I'll be here with more videos, so stay tuned. Thanks.